So I'm going to introduce a new kind of loop now, and it's called a for each loop. Now the advantage of a for each loop over say a for loop is that it improves readability and it works with collections a lot easier. Now what does all that mean? Well let's take a look. I have a sample application here. I'm setting up an array. It's an integer array and the array is called numbers. I'm initializing the array with all of these numbers here. So all of these numbers are going to be inside this variable called numbers. I'm now using a for loop which is going to cycle through every number in the array in turn and then output it to the screen. So let's run the application here and you can see here the application contains each of the numbers in our array. So we're just cycling through our array and outputting each number along the way. And we use the length property of the array to set up a condition for that. So what I'm going to do now is introduce the for each loop. So the first thing I said was the for each loop offers readability. So let's take a look at that now. So when setting up a for each loop, we use the keyword for each. We have the parentheses, just like you know a normal if statement, a for statement, a while loop, for example. And then we have the familiar curly braces. So let's have a look at how a for each loop looks. I'm going to do exactly the same as the for loop, so you can see it represented as a for each loop. So in the header for the for each loop, I set up a variable and I say in numbers. And then for each iteration of the for each loop, I want to output the variable num. Now, what does all this mean? Well, for a start, you can see the readability is a lot better. There's a lot less code here, and it looks a lot tidier, smaller, and it's less bloating. But how does it work? So what happens here in a for loop, you can see we set up a variable here. And each iteration, we can make use of this va um, variable right here. This is the same in a for each loop. But every time this iterates, this variable will equal the next value in our array. So the first time this runs, the first iteration, num is going to equal 1. The second time this loops, num will equal 4. The third time, 9. For example, in a for loop, this is equaling the index. Because we're just counting from 0, we're incrementing 0 by 1, and we're terminating it when num is equal to or more than the length of the numbers in the array. However, in a for each loop, this variable here is actually equaling the values in the array, not the index. The index is 0, 1, 2, 3. But in a for each loop, num will equal the actual value. So 1, 4, 9, 12, etc. So we're just outputting that to the screen. You see here we're using an index in the for loop to access the number behind the index, so 149. But in a for loop, it actually is set as the value, so num is the value. So we're just outputting the value to the screen. And let me prove that to you if I run the application now. You can see it's outputting all of the numbers in the array here. And the second thing I said was it works with collections a lot better. Now we've used a standard array like this integer array, but there is a lot more array types and collections in C sharp, for example, like lists and various things like that. And for each offers a you know better readability with those and it gives you more kind of options to work with them as well. So that's the benefit of a for each loop. And you can see, as it's a lot more readable, we don't need to define this kind of variable here and keep track of a counter. So it's a lot simple in that regard. So that is another kind of loop in C-sharp, and it's the for each loop.